Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video, we will be learning about the arches of the foot. To begin with, in this diagram you can see the medial view of the foot showing the medial longitudinal arch and here is the lateral view of the foot showing the lateral longitudinal arch. Now the arches of the foot are formed by the tarsal and metatarsal bones that are strengthened by ligaments and tendons and allow the foot to support the weight of the body in the erect posture with least weight. Now they are categorized as longitudinal and transverse arches. What you see right here are the two longitudinal arches that is the medial longitudinal and the lateral longitudinal arch. Now as an introduction to the arches of the foot, we need to look at a few points. So firstly, the arches of the foot help in fast walking, running and jumping. They also help in weight bearing and in providing upright posture. What you see right here is a footprint showing the weight bearing points of the sole. Nextly, the arches are supported by intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the sole in addition to the ligaments, the aponeurosis and the shape of the bones. Now the foot has to act as a flexible platform as well as a lever in order to propel the body forwards during walking, running or jumping. Now the presence of these arches make the sole concave. Concising the important points under the introduction to the arches of the foot, the arches of the foot help in fast walking, running and jumping. In addition, these help in weight bearing and in providing upright posture. The arches are supported by intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the sole, in addition to the ligaments, the aponeurosis and the shape of the bones. Now, the foot has to act as a pliable platform to support the body weight in the upright posture and as a lever to propel the body forwards in walking, running or jumping. In order to meet these requirements, the human foot is designed in the form of elastic arches or springs. These arches are segmented so that they can sustain the stresses of the weights and of the thrusts and the presence of these arches make the sole concave in shape. Now let's look at the classification of arches. There are two main classifications that is the longitudinal arches and the transverse arch. Now the longitudinal arches have the medial longitudinal arch and the lateral longitudinal arch. The transverse arch consists of anterior transverse arch and the posterior transverse arch. So here is a model of the foot complex which I will be showing you in order to explain the arches of the foot. So here we have the talus bone, the calcaneus, the navicular, the cuboid, the metatarsals and the phalanges. And here there is the medial longitudinal arch, this is the medial aspect. Looking at the lateral aspect, we have the lateral longitudinal arch. Then looking at the transverse arches, we have the anterior transverse arch and behind we have a half domed posterior transverse arch. So here we have the classification that is the longitudinal and transverse arches. Longitudinal has the medial longitudinal arch and lateral longitudinal arch and the transverse has anterior transverse arch and the posterior transverse arch. Now before we learn about the structure of the arches of the foot, let's get a basic idea about the parts of a typical arch. Firstly, we have the ends of the arch like the anterior and the posterior end. Then we have a summit that is a topmost point. We have a keystone in the arch. We have pillars that is like the anterior pillar, the posterior pillar that gives support to the arch and finally we have a joint that is a main joint as in the case of the arches of the foot. So this is the basic idea that we have to keep in mind before learning about the stru structure of the arches. So now let's move on to the formation of the structure of the arches and first we will be looking at the medial longitudinal arch. Now this arch is higher, more mobile and resilient than the lateral longitudinal arch. It is considered a big arc of a small circle with more bones and joints. So let's look at the ends of this arch. We have the anterior end, posterior end and a keystone. So in the anterior end, it is formed by the heads of the first, second and third metatarsal bones as you can see right here. The posterior end of this arch is formed 
by the medial tubercle of the calcaneum. And the keystone is the talus bone. Moving on to the summit of this arch, it is formed by the superior articular surface of the body of the talus bone. Moving on to the pillars, that is the anterior pillar and the posterior pillar. The anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the talus, the navicular bone right here, the three cuneiform bones and the first three metatarsal bones. Now the posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the medial part of the calcaneum. And the main joint in this medial longitudinal arch is the talo-calcaneo-navicular joint. The anterior end of the medial longitudinal arch is formed by the heads of the first, second and third metatarsal bones right here. The posterior end of this arch is formed by the medial tubercle of the calcaneum and the keystone here is the talus. The summit of this arch is formed by the superior articular surface of the body of the talus bone. The anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the talus, navicular, the three cuneiform bones as you can see right here and the first three metatarsal bones. The posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the medial part of the calcaneum bone. Concising the important points under the medial longitudinal arch, this arch is higher, more mobile and resilient than the lateral longitudinal arch. It is considered a big arc of a small circle with more bones and joints. Now the ends include the anterior end is formed by the heads of the first, second and third metatarsals. The phalanges do not take part in forming the arches. The posterior end of this arch is formed by the medial tubercle of the calcaneum and the keystone here is the talus. The summit is formed by the superior articular surface of the body of the talus. The pillars, the anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the talus, navicular, the three cuneiform and first three metatarsal bones. The posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the medial part of the calcaneum. And the main joint is the talo calcaneo navicular joint. Next, we are going to learn about the lateral longitudinal arch. Now, this diagram shows the bones that form the lateral longitudinal arch. Now, this arch is low with less bones, less joint and has limited mobility. It is built to transmit the weight and thrust to the ground. It is considered a small arc of a big circle, as you can see here. Now, let's learn about the ends. The anterior end is formed by the heads of the fourth and fifth metatarsal, as you can see right here. The posterior end is formed by the lateral tubercle of the calcaneum bone. And the keystone here is the cuboid bone. Looking at the summit, it lies at the level of the articular facets on the superior surface of the calcaneum at the level of the subtalar joint. Looking at the pillars, the anterior pillar is long and weak and it is formed by the cuboid bone and the fourth and fifth metatarsal. Here is the anterior pillar. Moving on to the posterior pillar, it is short and strong and it is formed by the lateral half of the calcaneum. And the main joint here is the calcaneo-cuboid joint. The anterior end of the lateral longitudinal arch is formed by the head of the fourth and fifth metatarsal. The posterior end of this arch is formed by the lateral tubercle of the calcaneum. And the keystone here is the cuboid bone. The summit of the lateral longitudinal arch lies at the level of the articular facets on the superior surface of the calcaneum at the level of the subtalar joint. The anterior pillar is long and weak. It is formed by the cuboid bone and the fourth and fifth metatarsals. The posterior pillar is short and strong and it is formed by the lateral half of the calcaneum. Concising the important points under the lateral longitudinal arch, this arch is low with less bones, less joint and has limited mobility. It is built to transmit the weight and thrust to the ground. It is considered a small arc of a big circle. Now the ends, the anterior end is formed by the heads of the fourth and fifth metatarsals. The posterior end of this arch is formed by the lateral tubercle of the calcaneum. The keystone here is the cuboid. The summit lies at the level of the articular facets on the superior surface of the calcaneum and the level of the subtalar joint. The anterior pillar is long and weak 
It is formed by the cuboid bone, the fourth and fifth metatarsals. The posterior pillar is short and strong. It is formed by the lateral half of the calcaneum. And the main joint is the calcaneo-cuboid joint. Now let's learn about the formation of the anterior and posterior transverse arches. The anterior transverse arch is formed by the heads of the five metatarsals. It is a complete arch because the heads of the first and fifth metatarsals both come in contact with the ground and form the two ends of the arch. Now looking at the posterior transverse arch, it is formed by the greater parts of the tarsals and the base of the metatarsals. It is incomplete because only the lateral end comes in contact with the ground and the arch forms a half dome which is completed by a similar half dome of the opposite foot. As you can see here, the posterior transverse arches of the foot form a half dome and it is completed by a similar half dome of the opposite foot. Now the anterior transverse arch is formed by the heads of the five metatarsals as you can see right here. It is a complete arch because the heads of the first and fifth metatarsals both come in contact with the ground and form the two ends of the arch. As you can see, the heads of the first and fifth metatarsals both come in contact with the ground and form the two ends of the anterior transverse arch. The posterior transverse arch is formed by the greater parts of the tarsals and the bases of the metatarsals. It is incomplete because only the lateral end comes in contact with the ground and the arch forms a half dome which is completed by a similar half dome of the opposite foot. As you can see it forms a half dome. Concising the points under the anterior and posterior transverse arches, the anterior transverse arch is formed by the heads of the five metatarsals. It is complete because the heads of the first and fifth metatarsals both come in contact with the ground and form the two ends of the arch. The posterior transverse arch is formed by the greater parts of the tarsus and the base of the metatarsus. It is incomplete because only lateral end comes in contact with the ground and the arch forms a half toe which is completed by a similar half toe of the opposite foot. Now let's move on to the factors that are responsible for the maintenance of the arches. There are five main points. First is the shape of the bones concerned. Second is the intersegmental ties or staples or the ligaments that hold the different segments of the arch together. Third is the tie beams or bowstrings. Fourth is the slings and fifth is suspension. We will be looking at each of these factors in detail. Now looking at the first factor that is a bony factor in detail, the posterior transverse arch is formed and maintained mainly because of the tarsal bones involved that is the cuneiform bones right here and the basis of the metatarsal bones. Now these metatarsal bones are wedge shaped. This is a wedge shape. Now the apex of this wedge points downwards as you can see right here. Concising the important points under the bony factor, the posterior transverse arch is formed and maintained mainly because many of the tarsal bones involved and the bases of the metatarsal bones are wedge shaped, the apex of the wedge pointing downwards. The bony factor is not very important in the case of other arches. Now let's look at the next factor that is the intersegmental ties. Now all the arches are supported by ligaments that unite the bones concerned. Now the most important ones are the spring ligament or the calcaneonavicular ligament for the medial longitudinal arch that you see right here and the long and short plantar ligament here is the short plantar ligament and here is the long plantar ligament for the lateral longitudinal arch. Now in the case of transverse arches that is the anterior and posterior transverse arch the tarsal and metatarsal bones are held together by various ligaments and by interosseous muscles as well. Concising the important points under the intersegmental ties all arches are supported by the ligaments uniting the bones concerned. 
The most important of these are the follows that is, the spring ligament for the medial longitudinal arch, the long and short plantar ligaments for the lateral longitudinal arch, and in the case of transverse arches, the tarsal and metatarsal bones are held together by various ligaments and by the interosseous muscles. Also. Moving on to the third factor that is, tie beams. The longitudinal arches are prevented from flattening by the plantar aponeurosis and the muscles of the first layer of the foot. Here you can see the plantar aponeurosis. Now these structures keep the anterior and posterior ends of these arches pulled together. Now in the case of transverse arch, the adductor hallucis muscle acts as a tie beam. Concising the important points under tie beams, Longitudinal arches are prevented from flattening by the plantar aponeurosis and by the muscles of the first layer of the sole. These structures keep the anterior and posterior ends of these arches pulled together. In the case of a transverse arch, the adductor hallucis muscle acts as a tie beam. Now let's learn about the next factor that is the slings. Now the summit of the medial longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by the tendons passing from the posterior compartment of the leg into the sole that is the tibialis posterior that you see right here, the flexor hallucis longus and the flexor digitorum longus. Now the summit of the lateral longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by the peroneus longus, here you can see the tendon of the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis, here you can see the tendon of the peroneus brevis. Now the tendons of tibialis anterior and the tendon of peroneus longus together form a sling that is a stirrup which keeps the middle of the foot pulled upwards and thus supports the longitudinal arches as you can see right here. Now the tendon of the peroneus longus runs transversely across the sole. It pulls the medial and lateral margins of the sole closer together which maintains the transverse arches. The transverse arch is also supported by the tibialis posterior which grips many of the bones of the sole through its slips. Concising the important points under the slings, the summit of the medial longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by tendons passing from the posterior compartment of the leg into the sole that is the tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. The summit of the lateral longitudinal arch is pulled upwards by the peroneus longus and the peroneus brevis. The tendons of the tibialis anterior and peroneus longus together form a sling that is a stirrup which keeps the middle of the foot pulled upwards thus supporting the longitudinal arches. The tendons of the peroneus longus runs transversely across the sole. It pulls the medial and lateral margins of the sole closer together maintaining the transverse arches. The transverse arch is also supported by tibialis posterior which grips many of the bones of the sole through its slips. Looking at the last factor, we have suspension. The medial longitudinal arch is suspended by the tibialis anterior and the lateral longitudinal arch by the peroneus longus. Looking at the functions of the arches, they distribute body weight to the weight bearing areas of the sole. They act as springs which help in walking and running. They also act as shock absorbers in stepping and jumping. The concavity of arches protects the soft tissues of the sole against pressure and the character of the medial longitudinal arch is resiliency and that of the lateral longitudinal arch is rigidity. Now before moving on to the clinical anatomy, here is a table showing the comparison between the medial and lateral longitudinal arch on the basis of certain factors, that is the features, anterior end, the posterior end, summit, anterior pillar, the posterior pillar, main joint, bony factor and these are the features. And here is the intersegmental ties, tie beams, slings and suspension and how it differs between the medial and the lateral longitudinal arch. This table shows a comparison between the medial and the lateral longitudinal arch that will make it easier to write it in the examinations. Similarly, there is a comparison between the anterior transverse arch and the posterior transverse arch. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy, the absence or collapse of arches leads to flat foot also called pes planus that you can see in this picture which may be congenital or acquired. Now exaggeration of the longitudinal arches of the foot is known as pes cavus. This is usually a result of contracture at the transverse tarsal joint. 
Now here in the clinical anatomy, absence or collapse of arches leads to flat foot, best plan is. As we had seen in the earlier picture, it may be congenital or acquired. The exaggeration of the longitudinal arches of foot is called pest cavus. This is usually a result of contracture, that is plantar flexion, at the transverse tarsal joint. Other deformities of the foot are talipes equinus, talipes calcaneus, talipes varus, valgus and equinovarus, which is called the club foot, and its characteristics. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of arches of foot as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology, biomechanics and other health science subjects, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.